All right. Good morning. Again. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me. Word for word. Verse by verse at the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me. Because I make... <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord for his correction. I make mistakes. My mouth <laughs> will go quicker than my brain. So read along with me. Keep an eye on me. Okay? Please. Okay? Now be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, and read along with me. Okay? The question came up in conversation. How do you prove that the authorized version is the perfect, given by inspiration of God? Okay? How do you do that? Now, there are a multitude of scriptures that we can go to that, that where the scripture validates itself. But, the question is, for example, an atheist or a Christian. And you know what's really interesting, which I find extraordinarily interesting? The atheist and the Christian usually will have the same arguments when attacking the authorized version. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Hmm. Maybe it's because they're both of the same spirit. What are we talking about? Jan uh, 1 John 4. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. We're just going to read two verses to start here. 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We, saints, are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the lowercase s, spirit of truth, and the lowercase s, spirit of error. Atheists and Christians speak of the world. Therefore the world heareth them. Therefore the world heareth them. Isn't that interesting? But how, how, do, you do, how, do, you, how do you answer that? Well, first of all, first of all, exactly like what we just pointed out, you need to determine whether or not that individual wants to hear truth, if they want to hear it or not. Now with an atheist, it's different than with a Christian. Because what I'm going to recommend to you is, go to Colossians chapter 3. You need to, dis you need to discern, you need to know whether or not the individual you are speaking with even wants to know the truth. Okay? Now what's a good way to do that? Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 5 on to verse 7. Mortify, kill. Therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And when you look at each one of those fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, are they not all results of covetousness? And are they not all forms of idolatry in and of themselves? <laughs> For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now there are some of these wicked Christians out there wanting to defend themselves to put up to keep up the facade that they're actually saved when they're not they'll say well this is just talking about saved brethren who are messed up no it isn't no it isn't you hear the truth and reject it one time you're a child of disobedience you're a child of wrath okay verse 7 
in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. See, a distinguishing mark there between a saved person and a lost person. A lost person is a child, is a child of disobedience. You hear the gospel one time, the, the true gospel. The true gospel. You hear that and you reject it, you're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. Okay? Romans chapter 3. The sleazy believist's favorite chapter, of course, of course, uh, after verse 18. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Romans 3. <coughs> Romans 3. Romans 3. <laughs> Verses 10. And you know where we're ending. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That includes you. That includes me too. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. You throw this at an atheist. You throw this stuff about at the atheist. Who rightfully scoffs at the idea when the Christian comes around God loves you unconditionally. And the atheist who has half a brain uh, most of the time is like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. God loves me unconditionally. But yet, if I don't believe on him, he's going, that, this is their argument. They're, he's going to send me to hell. But he loves me. <laughs> Right? I, I know. You're sitting there thinking, it's like, well, I don't know, because you might be one of these Christians that thinks God loves everybody. Unconditionally. Everybody? No. He doesn't. God does not love you unconditionally, especially if you reject His Son. Hmm? Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, our Father. Any questions about the sonship and stuff like that? I'll remember this. Um... Uh, uh, Jesus didn't know the day or hour. Okay, we talk about that. All right. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. You throw this at an atheist. That there's none good. No, not one. Watch how they react. Are they... Do they want to hear more? Or do they get up the dukes? Hmm? That's very telling. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You confront the atheist. Or, or a Christian, uh, especially a Christian with this. See how they react. See if they want to hear more, if they want to know. If they reject this, they're rejecting truth. And of course, with the Christian, especially these sleazy believists, because with any, any sleazy believist, sooner or later, usually more sooner than later, it all comes around... I'm not that bad as so-and-so. Same with the atheist. And see, when you encounter someone like that, which is the majority of what we encounter, but see, when this thing about the scripture comes up with, well, how do you know it's the perfect word of God? Coming from an atheist who doesn't believe he's a bad person. Coming from the Christian who doesn't believe they're a bad person. That's, that's difficult. That's difficult. That is. This is a good way, brethren, for you to gauge whether or not someone is really interested in truth. Okay? It, it is. How do you deal with being told that you, you, are not good no matter what you do? 
That's what Romans... And this is why the uh, free gracer avoids it. <laughs> this is exactly why. Because they save themselves by their own belief. There's something special. The Catholic. The Catholic. They'll give lip service to this. They will. The Catholic will. But what do they do? Well, I've done this. I've done this. I've done this, 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 this. Trying to offset it with their works. And never mind the Calvinists. <laughs> Calvinist. Well, some of the most pretentious, arrogant scoundrels, like that cross-dressing Calvinist. Oh, I'll pra Lord praise you when you put that devil in hell. Praise you for your righteous judgment. <laughs> I want to see that guy go to hell. I don't, but praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgment. Okay? When it comes to this issue of, well, how do you prove it? We can. Why? Because the scripture validates itself. But when you got someone who doesn't want to hear it, it's like, it's like the uh, prove how man got here without using God. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, you, you want me to prove to you that you know how man got here, but you don't want me to use God as the way how man got here. <laughs> See, what are they trying to do? <clears throat> They're trying to disarm you. They're trying to disarm you, dear brethren. When they say stuff like that, they're trying to take away the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Okay? And, of course, with us saints, that you, 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 you're going to have to kill me to get this out of my hands. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. <laughs> there ain't no way. You, no, no way. Uh-uh. And as was topic of the discussion, or one of them, and, and uh, uh, Alberto Rivera said this. You cannot go from Christ to Rome. What does that mean? The Bibles, the Bibles, the NIV, the ESV, the non-King James Version, which is a mix of Alexandrian and Antiochian. It's still, they come from Rome. This doesn't. Okay? This doesn't. Okay? This doesn't. Alright? The Bibles come from Rome. And we, we talked about it. How can a saint abandon the authorized version and then choose to go on to a Bible? How? Is it possible? Remember, God isn't holding a gun to anyone's head forcing you to do anything. He's not. He's not. He's not. But see, someone who truly has the Lord within them, sooner or later, he's going to guide you to what he inspired, what he wrote. Okay? He wrote this through man's hand, you'll say, yes. But who was guiding his hands? Who was guiding Paul's hands? Hmm? The Lord was. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay? See, the authorized version is the word of God. The Bibles are the word of man. Okay? That's the thing. And here's another thing. The atheists and a lot of the Christians, they have the same arguments. Isn't that interesting? That's very, very fascinating to me. That the thing about, you know, well, the oldest and best and blah, 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 uh, that comes from both atheist and Christian. Because like I said, they're both pretty much of the same spirit. That spirit of Antichrist. Okay? <laughs> they are. They, they, they really are. But here's the thing. Okay? An atheist, that Muslim dude, I found his channel too, by the way. Oh, uh, That Muslim dude, he doesn't use the scriptures. He uses the Bible. And someone who's somewhat learned for example, 
A lot of the Bibles say, who killed Goliath, huh? Well, David did. Ah, uh, read the Bible. Ah, uh, no. No, uh, the same Goliath died twice by two different guys. <laughs> oh, and, and, and why are we baptized Catholic? Huh? Oh, well, if you had uh, Acts 8.37 in your little precious Bible there, you would know the reason why we are getting uh, dipped in water. And it's not salvific. God is one person comprised of spirit, soul, and body. But yet, <laughs> I've heard this from atheists, the Johannian comma, right? Which is, they're referencing 1 John 5, 7. The, you know, uh, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Uh, I, think, I think, I'm not sure, and I don't care. But I think my, even the non-King James might take that one out. I'm not sure, and I don't care. Because it's a Bible. All right? All right? But here's the thing about the Scriptures. Here's the thing about the Scriptures. How many times do you hear from people, it's like, well, I can't understand it. And where do they go? What do they do? The these and the thou's. Right? The these and the thou's. Um, and you're educated. I, I'm a high school dropout, and I can understand the the, thy, thine, ye, and stuff like that. The F, give me a break. No. Like I told you, now like we've said before in other videos, the deeper things of Scripture, <laughs> spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. You need the Lord for it. Uh, absolutely. But look at all of our enemies. Look at these devils. Look at these devils who are, you know, doing these videos, okay? Uh, they can get a good gleaning over the surface, but the deeper things they can't get. Why? Because they don't have the Lord. And with all the Christian literature out there, like with all these books, and there ain't nothing wrong with books. Making them many books, there is no end, but hey, I mean, there, 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 there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. You, you go overboard on it and you're admonished in Scripture not to do so. But, but anyway, okay. Like for that filthy ChristianBook.com, look at all the stuff they got on there. It's, it's a smorgasbord. It's, it's, like, it's like Christianity in and of itself. It's a buffet line. Okay? Doesn't that make any of you think, wonder? It's like, why is there so much stuff on the spiritual life? Why is there so much stuff out there? Oh, maybe because the Lord is not in Christianity. Oh, wow. What a concept. You tell me which Christ you're talking about. Hmm? And you're talking about the true Christ? Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk about the true Christ. The, most of the atheists and the Christians, they ain't even talking about the true Christ. But see, okay, here's the thing. It's not that these people can't... Uh, well, the these and the thou's, the begats. And, no, pal. What's the real reason? The deeper things, you need the spirit of... Of course. But like, for example, Romans 1, 2, and 3. A lost person can understand that. But when you present it to them, I can't understand what you're saying. No. No. You know what? And I'll prove it to you. Hebrews chapter 4, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And unless... I love that comment. I love that comment. And unless you are of mankind and have a spirit, soul, and body, unless you are man, mankind, the Word of God cannot affect you. Meaning that, like, you know, Fluffy doesn't have a soul. Okay? All right, I know some of you guys, you know, vegetables, trees don't have souls. Okay? <laughs> I mean, come on. But, Hebrews chapter, that was a beautiful comment, by the way, brother. Um, and I believe I, that one I actually uh, uh, pinned. But anyway, rabbit trap. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick, alive. A Bible's dead. 
A Bible is dead. The scriptures are alive. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You can reference with that of the Old and New Testament. Okay? But, and remember, you know, a lot of the heretics want to say things are like a straight edge razor and not having another application onto it. Some people, certain people will do that to defend some uh, special Roman Catholic day coming up on Monday. They'll, they'll pull that thing that this is the only way you can interpret a certain passage in Scripture for anything. And so whatever. But no. Sharper, what does it say? Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and lowercase s spirit. And of the joints and marrow. Person is a spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> that doesn't say body, Brad. Dude. Dude. Joints and marrow. What, what is that indicative of? Come on. Come on. Don't, don't be stupid. Willfully ignorant. Okay? You're not that dense. Most of you aren't that dense. There are some people that are. But whatever. Okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And as we alluded into the previous video, which uh, had to be done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, Proverbs 28, verse 26. Proverbs 28, verse 26. <laughs> he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And you know what? Hold your place right there. Hold your place right there. Okay. And go to Psalm... Uh, what is that, brother? Psalm 12. Psalm 12, I believe that is. Yes, that is Psalm 12. Might be 14. We will soon find out. Yes, it is Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Fool? What is a fool? He's the guy that with the jester hat. And with that. No, 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 no. The fool, uh, Psalm 14, verses 1 on to verse 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's what a fool is. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, depart from evil, and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Again, how do you handle that? will tell you a lot about when you're talking to someone and witnessing on to someone. You know, if they have no interest or want to know anything of the truth. Okay. Can I give you a gospel track? No? Okay. Fine. I, there, there are others out there. I did. You, you go ahead and have good luck at the great white throne of judgment, pal. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> Vaya con Dios. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's very telling. It's very telling. Because what's what's going on there? They say in the heart there is no God. But, here's the funny part. In uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? The, the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Because of Adam and Eve, our very first father and mother, uh, we're all born into sin because of what they did. Thanks, guys. You know? Okay? And, to know good and evil. To know what is good and what is evil. Man cannot truly know what is good and what is evil. Only God can truly know what is good and what is evil. And he has given us a perfect standard in which we can judge ourselves first and others. And, he, and here's the ultimate thing, dear friend. You ask a Christian. You ask a Christian. Is there such a thing as a perfect Word of God. You ask an atheist that too. 
These people have been trained by the Vatican, all of them. Well, the originals, the oldest and best, the originals, the originals that don't exist, which even the Jesuit trained scholars will tell you, even the Jesuit trained scholars tell you what? That Sinaiticus and Vaticanus that are in the custody of Rome, even they will tell you, well, those are copies upon copies. They, they'd have a really hard time trying to prove otherwise with all the erasings that have been done in those things. Okay? But see, they say, well, the originals, the, the originals, you know, penned by David and whatnot and whatnot, well, they're, expi they're inspired. But they don't exist anymore. Oh, gee, isn't that a thing, huh? Yeah. So then, so then to the Christian. And this is how they've been trained by the Vatican. It's Jesuit created, Satan created, yea hath God said, textual criticism. Okay? That's what it is. Okay? You ask uh, any Christian, is there a perfect word of God? Well, I believe the Bible is true. That's not what I asked you, pal. Is there one that is perfect without error? They'll say, no, there isn't. There's, always, there's something wrong with every one of them. How do you know? And then they throw it back at it. Well, how do you know? Want me to tell you? First of all, uh, um, you know you're not a good person, right? There you go. <laughs> There you go. You see, you need to dis you need to know when it comes to the because remember, brethren, most of the times, almost 9.9999% of the time, when you come across someone questioning scripture, they don't believe in a perfect standard but themselves. And they're trained by Rome. How do they know anything? They gotta go to their Jesuit train cemetery and scholar who has a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall for them to validate it. Is that possible because God is not in Christianity? Huh? Is that possible? Hmm? Yes, it is possible. God is not in Christianity. Give me a break. Okay? But back in Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12 again. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I've seen this. You, you start quoting scripture to an atheist, especially a Christian. Why? See, because you're not going to get away from the scripture. The scripture is like it says right there. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. You can get a Bible that could suit almost any, any sin you want to justify. You want to justify a woman preacher? Get an NIV. You want to justify sodomy? Get a message. Okay? You want to justify that Christ is going through the great tribulation? Get any of them. Okay? <laughs> Get any of them. Okay? <laughs> but if you want something that is truth, pure, unadulterated truth, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 28 on to verse 31. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 28 on to verse 21. 28 on to verse 31. Excuse me. Jeremiah 23. Uh, this is not my Cambridge, obviously, as you see. Jeremiah 23, what does that mean to you? Nothing. It's not broken like my Cambridge is. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 28 on verse 31. The, pro <laughs> the prophet that hath a dream, let him, let him, let him tell his dream. You're dreaming saying that there is no perfect word of God. Well, well, the King James and these guys, watch out for. These guys avoid. Okay, seriously. You're going to waste your time and you're going to pull the hair out of your head anyway. Uh, our brother knows a couple like this. Well, the King James, it's the best translation. But, come on, what? 
well, it's not perfect. See, God is perfect, right? Come on, even you, you wicked devils have to admit that. God is perfect and without sin, right? Okay. All right. Now, if God has exalted his word above his name, we're going to look at that. That would mean that he would have staked everything on it, right? So that would mean if God is perfect, which he is, and he has exalted his word above his name, meaning he has staked everything on it, uh, doesn't, come on, think, people. God is perfect. And he's exalted his word above his name. So doesn't that mean that his word also by just reason and logic, I know that's hard for some of you, shouldn't that mean that there should be, that there is a one out there that is? Hmm? And when you, now think about this, Christian, when you say God's perfect, but we don't have a perfect word of God, so then the perfect God couldn't perfectly preserve and give you a perfect standard? Go away. You got it, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Good. Go away. The Lord rebuke you. Go away. Think about Remember that, brother, sister. Remember that. You run into somebody like that, especially those that say, well, the King James, that's the best translation we got. But it's not perfect. The Lord rebuke you. Don't, don't spit it. <laughs> but the Lord rebuke you. you. You're going to tell me that you believe in a perfect God, right? But yet that perfect God can't give us a perfectly preserved word. Go take a long walk off a short pier, pal. Lord rebuke you. Well, it's the originals. That don't exist. Even your scholars trained by the Jesuits will tell you that. Going in circles with these people, brethren. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff that gets blown away? To the wheat, which you make bread. Bread of life. Uh, December 31st, uh, least of all, Fellowship Channel. Check it out. Hey, never mind, never mind. Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Hard as a rock, lowercase r there. Wherefore, therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal words, everyone that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor, steal his words. God has promised. God promised that he would preserve his word. And he has in the authorized version. Okay? He has. But see, when you're your own God, and you have something that you want to justify, I'm better than so-and-so. Yeah. See, you can't get away from the authorized version. Why? Because it will find you out. Your sin will find you out when you read the authorized version of the scripture. Okay? You, you read that. You read that message sometime. Okay? Pick a book in the message. Okay? And, and see if you can't make it through there without wanting to wretch. Okay? Did you read that thing? And I, I mean, now granted, even uh, MacArthur and even uh, White, uh, Jesuit James White, uh, bashed that thing. <laughs> That's pretty obvious. But even so, you get an NIV, dude, you can justify virtually any kind of sin in an NIV, in an ESV. Okay? All right? When you are your own standard, all hell breaks loose. Therefore, oh, behold, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Therefore, verse 30, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Steal his words. 
You got these Christians, if they even do, uh, using an NIV to witness to someone. Okay? The old, I am against the prophets, said the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. An interesting thing to, an interesting aspect to bring up, which is, which is truth. Okay? Most of the saints that you will talk to, most, not all, praise the Lord for those that are not all, most of the saints that you will talk to, when they came to the Lord, broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, called upon His name, and He saved them, because we're babes or whatever, most saints that you'll talk to about this will tell you, well, I didn't start out on the authorized version. I didn't start out on the authorized version. It didn't take that long for the Lord to get me to the authorized version. It wasn't even a year, okay? Because why? I saw how these Christians, was, you can't, it's too hard to understand. Well, what do you mean? Now, you start out with something simple. And, of course, I started in reading um, the non-King James Version. But then again, I was being Horish at the very beginning because I was a babe. I didn't know better. Horish, meaning I was using the non-King James Version, the Holman Christian Standard. And I read the NIV for a little bit, but it's like, hey, get out of here. Okay. And what else? Um, uh, the nitwit living in the trash and stuff like that. And also I had uh, the ESV as well. Okay. But then, you know, not even a year. Not even a year. Okay. Months. The Lord. It's like, read, read this. Read the authorized version. Read the authorized version. And it wasn't even a year. And I did the, you know, the two-fisted approach, you know. Brethren, you want to really do some comparative study, take the two fists, one in this hand and one in that hand, okay? And I did the comparison stuff myself, and it's like, wait a minute. And then the delay of, well, it's too hard to understand. It's like, well, wait, wait a minute. What is it, you know, with the E's and the D's and stuff like that? The scripture explains itself. And plus being saved, and the Lord who will guide you in all truth. See, that's the thing. A saint, sooner or later, the Lord is going to guide you unto his word. Not by force, though. Not by force. Okay, not by force. Okay? If you're a saint, if you're an actual saint, and you reject the authorized version, To deliver such a one unto the Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Think about that. Think about, is that, now, is that even possible? Unfortunately, I believe it is. But see, you got the witness in you, sealed. You ain't going to get away. You, and see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Okay, and we're, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves here. Um, the Lord is going to judge us all. The judgment seat of Christ, our works are going to be judged. Not we, because we're once saved, always saved. Our works are going to be judged for reward, not salvation. At the great white throne, your works are going to be judged for salvation. See how it works? That's why you want to be saved now, okay? But this is the standard of judgment that even the Lord himself is going to judge you by. He's not going to come up with something new and judge you by it when he has already given you the standard which by he himself is going to judge the nations. But yet, according to Christians, according to Christians, the perfect God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, isn't perfect enough to give us a perfect standard You're on crack cocaine, if that's your belief. That uh, the God is perfect. But there ain't a perfect 
Word of God out there. You're on crack cocaine. You're on drugs. Yourself. You're high on yourself because you are your own God. Okay? Amos. Amos chapter 5. One verse. A couple of one verse uh, things here. Amos chapter 5. See, people can understand the scriptures. It's just that they don't want to understand the scriptures. Why? Because the scriptures cut you, boy. You're not going to get away from the scriptures. You're not. Because as our Lord is, the scriptures, that one thing you lack, that one thing, the Lord is going to put his finger on that. And when you read the scriptures, you're, you're in sin. You're, you're, you're sliding backwards a little bit. You're avoiding the Lord. Why? Because you know if you pick up the scriptures, he ain't going to play around with you. He's going to get right to it, boy. He's going to cut you. He is. And remember, there's a difference between being pricked in the heart and cut to the heart. See, when you get pricked, a little blood comes out. But when you get cut, it's a massive flow. We'll, just, we'll explain that in a little bit. Okay? But Amos chapter 5, verse 10, just one verse. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Do you know that the original run of the living Bible, the green one that had the like almost leather cover, cover you know that had the words in it? it? It's been expunged now. But an original run of the living Bible had the, the in, use your imaginations, S-O-B in it. You son of a... When Saul was rebuking Jonathan, Okay, you son of a, that was in the original run of the Living Bible. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, but see, find a Bible that doesn't rebuke you. Find one that suits you because you're your own standard. And Micah chapter 2, Micah chapter 2. Verses 6 and 7. Prophesy ye not, say they, to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them. Ooh, look at that. That they shall not take shame. Now there are those out there who have um, seared their conscience. You can't kill your conscience. You can't. You can't. Even some of these wet job serial killers, psychopaths out there, their conscience has not been killed. It's been seared, but you can't kill your conscience. You can't. You can't. Somewhere deep down, somewhere, you know. But yeah. Prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. See, today... There are no Old Testament prophets, you wicked charismatics, Pentecostals. Okay? The Old Testament prophets are Old Testament prophets. That's not prophesy today. Prophesying today is a believer who has the Lord within them speaking to you his word. That's prophesying today. Okay? All right? That we talk about in the lovely uh, 1 John uh, 4 video rebuking the absurdity that I once taught myself that uh, just because someone could say <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh Jesus is the Lord that proves someone is saved no, no it doesn't no it doesn't but that that will be in the description box for you it's not that these people can't understand it that's a cop out they can understand it well enough to reject it why because you find a Bible, what shame is in? You read that filthy message sometime, man, uh, you ain't going to get any shame in that at all. <laughs> hey, you, could, you could read that. I remember that about in 2 Timothy, the, the, one of the clearest passages rebuking these stupid female preachers. Okay? Um, you read that in the message. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow! Okay? 
But anyway, O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the Lord KSS, Spirit of the Lord straightened, one that he imparts, okay? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? John 3. John 3. Oh, he's reading John 3.16. No, I'm not. This is what you... Uh, John 3.16. Okay? John 3.16. Okay? It's not the gospel for today. Hmm. The death, burial, and resurrection. It's not there. Oh! Oh, you can make about verse 14 about him being lifted up. Okay? All right? But Nicodemus didn't know that. Okay? There is a place for John 3.16 when you're witnessing to people. But that's not what you begin with. And to be honest with you, in witnessing to uh, the people that the Lord has allowed me and my wife to do, to witness onto, uh, John 3.16 never comes up. I, no, no, that's not. Uh, the, the, the one guy, he brought it up. He brought it up. Okay, but yeah, it, it never, rarely, if ever, comes up. Okay, but John 3 Verses 19 on to verse 21. And see, the scriptures are living because the Lord and the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit speaks to we, the saints, through the scripture. Okay? Um, he can even speak to a lost person, especially if they're reading Romans 1, 2, and 3. Okay? That's why they don't like it. Then they'll say, well, I can't understand it. You, yeah, you can't. Oh, you have a college education and you can't understand the scriptures. You can't understand the King James Version. Oh, you should see, brother. I've not thrown that at some of these guys before. And I, I bet so you're college educated? It's like, yeah, I went to so and so. It's like, oh. And with all your Jesuit, and I said that to the guy, with all your Jesuit education, you can't understand this. <laughs> A little fire under them sometime, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you, you're brilliant, but yet you can't understand this. Yeah, uh, horse pucky, pal, horse pucky. Nineteen on verse twenty-one. And this is the condemnation: the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. And how do you learn about what the true light is? Right here. The, the Bibles justify sin. The scriptures don't. For everyone that for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And how are you going to judge whether or not they are wrought in God? Oh, you go to your pastor who's trained by the Jesuits. Huh? Or you get a commentary. Or you get a book on the spiritual life by, oh, by one of them uh, twits like uh, Joyce Meyer who should go to her uh, hotbed anytime soon, I hope. Okay. <laughs> how do you know? Unless you have a perfect standard to judge upon. Okay. And, and, and let's just quickly go through the basics. Let's just quickly go through these, okay? Just quickly, all right? Scripture confirms within itself that it is the perfect and errant, given by inspiration word of God. Psalm 12, 6 on 8. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them, the words, from this generation forever. Interesting. Check your Bible, Christian. It doesn't say that, does it? You read an NIV, it says, well, you'll preserve us. Uh, that's not the promise. The promise is that the perfect God is going to perfectly preserve his word. Where is it? Oh, we haven't found it yet. Well, maybe you haven't. <laughs> Or maybe you don't want to. It's the authorized version. King James Version, pal. 
Oh, it's the 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 Greek. It's the Hebrew. Oh, which one of the Nesalalan? Which one of the Textus Receptus? Which one of the Hebrew? Which one? See, it, it doesn't it seem that it always comes down to the trying to get out of these people. Which one are you talking about? Like Christ. Well, Christ means to be a follower of Christ, a Christian. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? They, they, they seem to kind of skimp on that. Verse 8, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Oh, like Jesuits. Yea, hath God said textual scholars. Like John MacArthur, who wrote his own Bible. Jesuit James White, who David Daniels referred to as a brother. Okay? Hmm. Promises that the Lord will is going to preserve His word. Okay, uh, now one of my wife's favorite portions of Scripture, which she can quote verbatim. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Where do you get the law of the Lord? The Scripture. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Where do you find the testimony? Hmm. Ah, the statutes, the commandments. Hmm. The judgments, the law, where do you find all these? Perfectly preserved in the authorized version. Okay? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And remember, what does Satan do? All this will I give you if you fall down and worship me. All will be thine. You can have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. Through philosophy and vain deceit, you can justify any sin by whatever Bible you want to choose. Yeah. Moreover by them is thy... Well, I can barely see that. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. I can see. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And how are they going to be unless you have a perfect standard to judge them off of? Okay? Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. Like I said, these are just, we're just running, running down these. Okay, this is just a rundown. 5 and 6 in Proverbs 30. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee. And thou be found a liar. And what did the Christian and the atheist say? Well, the authorized version is I have words. Have you ever actually read Hebrew before? Okay, straight Hebrew to English, like if you have, uh, what is that, uh, interlinear. Uh, without putting words in there, it seems kind of jar jumbled and whatnot like that. Okay? Like words like the and 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 stuff like that. Okay? All right? But here's the thing. What's the fruit of the authorized version? Hmm? Over 400 years of the authorized version. What is the fruit of it? And as a rabbi had said unto me once, uh, in actually defending Christ, you, you want good evidence to show you that Jesus was actually who he said he was? 
Look at that, how he's attacked. Think about that, brother. Look at how the authorized version is attacked. Look at how atheists want to attack the scriptures knowing not God and knowing nothing about them. Hmm. Huh? Look, every single Bible, every single one, what do they compare themselves to? Hmm. Come on, you know this. They, every single one that comes out, it's supposed to be what? An upgrade from what? The authorized version. Why is, now, the circular reasoning argument is this. Well, it must be, see, it's so bad that everyone, no. No. We have just looked at scriptures already that show that man doesn't want to hear truth. And when you got something that is pure and perfect that you aren't going to get away from, yea, hath God said, Look at how this, this, the authorized version is at the top tier of the forbidden books still today by the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? And the Catholic, well, we gave you the Bible. Yeah, you did. Bravo! And then you added all those other stupid apocryphal books which justify your doctrines. Yeah. But yeah, you did. You gave Christian. Rome gave Christianity the Bible. Yes, they did. God gave us the scriptures. You're right, Catholic. You're right. Your church, Satan's church, gave Christianity the Bible. Bravo! Bravo! Take a bow. I'll give you a bozo button. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, gave the body of Christ, the saints, the scriptures. But then you pipe and smoke, pal. Okay? And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Th these are just simple references, brethren. There are quite a few, actually. But these are just simple references. Okay? These, these are Psalm 12, are Psalm 19, Proverbs 30, 2 Timothy 3, Dude, you ought to know these. You ought to at least know the address. Okay? And, brother, sister, I love you. You ain't got no excuse if you don't at least know the address of Psalm 12, Psalm 19, Proverbs 30, and 2 Timothy 3. Okay? You, you don't have an excuse for that, brother, sister. Get with it. Okay? I love you. All right? If you don't know the address on this, um, come on, man. Come on. Time's a waste. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly... <clears throat> I'm trying. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I don't know why I struggle so bad with that one. I do. I, it, it just, it, something with the lips. <laughs> but, that's, that's a, I love you. But that, these are the simple ones. These are the simple, yeah. But, but how can you prove that's the real scripture? Number one, look at how you're reacting. I can't understand it. Oh, what? You can't understand that you're not a good person? Don't give me that. Don't give me that. Uh, Ephesians 6. And see, when people say that, when people say that, well, how do you know? How do you know it's the perfect Word of God? What are they trying to do? Ephesians 6. See, the Scripture itself and see, like I said, a lot of the, you know, in uh, uh, Psalm 12, Psalm 19, Proverbs 30, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, Bibles mess those up because they're not, 
the Bibles are not the Word of God. They're, they're man's words. Okay? And as I had touched on earlier, a lot of saints will tell you that, well, when the Lord saved me, I didn't start out in the authorized version. But the Lord guided me to the authorized version. Okay? All right? See, now, that doesn't justify the usage of a Bible. It doesn't. Because if the Bibles were, if, the, if those Bibles were legitimate, why on earth would there be so many of them? Huh? Have you thought about that? If they were per if the Bibles were perfect, why are there so many? Meaning different translations. Why? They translate it so you can find one that you can justify your sin in. You ain't gonna do it with this. You ain't. But see, when you as a saint come and this topic comes up from someone who isn't saved. Trying to justify themselves. Well, how do you know? What are they trying to take away from you? They're trying to disarm you. Ephesians 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet covers the head. We Catholic, guess what? We saints, we know when we die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know where we're going when we die, Catholic. We know we are going to be heaven. Going, to, excuse me, going to be going to heaven. That's not a sin of presumption, you wicked devil. Okay, you're being lied to, Catholic. All right? And take the helmet of salvation, um, um, eternal security, okay, assurance, and the sword of the capitalist spirit, which is the Word of God. The definitive article. Word of God. Have, have you figured it out already when you see uh, the Word of God? Or word where it says words, it's talking about the actual written words, of course. Word of God, the encompassing Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. The definitive article. God is not the author of confusion. How can the perfect God perfectly preserve his word in what was it, over 200 versions of Bibles? We read Psalm 12. Let's see, what are they trying to do? It's the, prove to me how man got here, but you can't use God. <laughs> prove to me how you got here but you can't use your science falsely so-called, meaning your evolution. Ah! <laughs> They're trying to disarm us. Of course. And, you know, a way of subtlety of disarming is, well, it's the best one, but it's not perfect. Again, we, we serve a perfect God, but a perfect God who's not perfect enough to perfectly preserve his word without error for us. You, you guys who believe in that, you're just trying to justify sin. That's all it is. You're on drugs. Okay? Revelation 19, okay? The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Made reference to this earlier, and here it is. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. Just one verse. And out of his mouth, this is at the second coming. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. A sharp sword. Hebrews 4.12, a sharp two-edged sword. The sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6.17. You mark those in your uh, scriptures, buddy. Mark those. Okay? At least, at least know the address, brother. If you know, okay, don't worry about quoting it verbatim. Always walk around with a sword on you. But when it comes to, mark those. Know the address so you can respond to these. Always have a sword on you. Don't give me no excuse. 
Don't give the Lord an excuse. He ain't going to take one. Be prepared. Okay? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Now, like I've told, we've talked about this verse before, but again, we're addressing it here. I have seen, you Google search this, where the thing about that verse, where an actual physical sword is going to happen. No, no. This is the sword of the Spirit. This is the standard that the Lord is going to judge you by. A perfect standard KJV. Great channel by a brother who unfortunately doesn't make videos anymore. Unfortunately. That's our loss, brother. But this, the authorized version, this is what God is going to judge you by. This is the standard that he has set. And when you got Bibles that contradict each other, that even atheists can figure out, that even Muslims can figure out. People say, well, there's contradictions in the authorized version. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. There are things that you have to pay attention to and things that you have to look deeply into to explain them, but there ain't no contradictions in Scripture. So, well, the guy, one guy was one age and the other, and the, and the other part of Scripture, he says he was a different age. It's like, pay attention to the verses and also uh, the uh, a little milk in the search section if you're on a laptop or a computer. A little milk. We, we talk about that. Okay? There are no contradictions in the authorized version. But Christians and atheists and Muslims alike will spend all day showing you the contradictions in the Bibles. And that's the point. See, Satan purposely has given you so much blah that you people don't know where to turn to. Number one, because you don't have the Spirit. So where do you turn to? You go back to Mother Church to get your answers. And also, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Okay, or, uh, 16, excuse me, 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And what was that in Hebrews chapter 12? The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance, his body was as the shine as the sun shineth in his strength. Again, I've seen this, the, the pictures of it. It's actually kind of weird where you they you can find these pictures with the sword coming out of Jesus' mouth. Uh, this is what that's a reference on to the authorized version of the scripture. The authorized version. And you Christians have already have proven yourselves by your arguments. Well, there is the King James is the best one, but it's not perfect. It's really hard to work with and deal with and witness onto someone like that. I mean, it is. It can be done because it's the Lord doing it. But see, when you get into a situation like that and with an individual like that, the best we can do, hope to be done, is that seeds get planted and the Lord bringeth the increase. That's, that's pretty much all we can do as saints. Be obedient unto the Lord in the, in the moment. You know, you don't take the scriptures and beat them over the head. Uh, I mean, like I said, you can, you can find out Rather quickly, actually, whether or not someone wants to hear the truth. You, uh, you, you let the scripture do the work. You're not a good person. That's a good way to gauge. It really is. It really is. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. Already alluded to this. Uh, already alluded to this, but now we're going to look at it. Psalm 138. 
verses 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the little g gods will I sing praise unto thee. That's not a mention unto like um, Asmosidus or the Greek gods. Remember, what was Satan's lie in the Garden of Eden? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Man cannot perfectly know what is good and what is evil. We can get close, but we can't know perfectly. Okay? You need a perfect standard. <clears throat> I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And he wasn't talking about himself because... It was a lowercase w, John 17, 17. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Dear, dear brethren, dear person, spirit, soul, and body, whoever you are. Again, he's magnified his word above his name, meaning he's staked everything on it. How in the world, how in her days, can you expect someone to believe, especially witnessing onto like an atheist or someone, how can you expect them to believe that when there are over 230 or something like that versions of the Bible out there? You're on, you're on drugs. You're crazy. God who is perfect gave us a perfect standard. And you, Christian, okay, Christian who ought to know better. Atheist, you, you guys have the same arguments, but you, you're a different thing. Okay, you Christians ought to know better. You say God is perfect, but yet God can't perfectly give us a perfect word. What's wrong with you? You love your sin. That's what it is. You love, you love this stuff way too much, boy. So what do you do? You go to a Bible to find a justification for it. If God is perfect and he can't perfectly preserve a word for us to have, then what are we doing? What are we doing, huh? See, you Christian, it's about your feelings. Look at, look at what's going to be coming Monday. It's about your feelings. It's about your feelings. It's about, all about you. It's about your preference. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not about preference. This is, what, this is not what I prefer. This is all there is. This is His Word. Okay? I love the Lord and I love His Word. My preference has nothing to do with it. But see, Christian, oh, it's all about you. It's a smorgasbord. Choose a Bible that, you, that fits you. Christian. Yeah. Again, think of how absurd it is to, for you, Christian, to say God is perfect, but yet He can't give us a perfect <laughs> set of scriptures. To judge ourselves and others off of? Wonder what sin you're trying to hide, man. Huh? Okay? Alright? First John chapter five. Now see, right here, first John chapter five. Like I've told you before, you want to get the ball rolling with a Catholic. Come here to first John chapter five. <laughs> Throw at him the Johannian comma, which is describing the Godhead. Not the Trinity. Don't get me started on that. Okay? But, and of course, in the Bibles, and I don't even think, I, I don't care about if I'm right about that or not, because the, the New King James, the New King James takes Alexandrian and Antiochian. Alexandria, Egypt, where the, uh, the manuscripts that are in the Vatican, the oldest and best came from, Alexandria, where um, Gnosticism was... 
Alexandria, you look in scripture, Alexandria, anything that comes there is basically not good, with the one exception of Apollos. Okay? It, no. Okay? Syria. Syrian. Antiochian. Uh, a, wait, no, no, no. Alexandria, Antioch. Syria. Okay, excuse me. The, the, uh, the, the texts in Rome are based off of Egyptian, Antioch, uh, Alexandrian, Alexand I get that confused. Alexandria, Egypt. Okay, that's those are what the Bibles are based off of. The authorized version is Antiochian, Syrian based. Okay, but there again, those manuscripts, how many of the Texas Receptus? There, I don't know how many, 30 of the Anesalan now, and how many of the Hebrew? Okay, come on. All right, come on. But see, if God is perfect, then that means his word ought to be perfect. And to say otherwise is illogical. And even a Muslim could point that one out to you. Okay? And a Christian, unless they're a saint, <laughs> and if they're a saint, you shouldn't be, I believe you shouldn't be calling yourself a Christian. Is that going to send you to hell? No. No. But, dude! There has to be distinction, especially in these last days. But anyway, okay? For you to say God is perfect and there is no perfect standard, well, it's the originals which don't exist. And you're just what scholars will even tell you that. Okay? Well, there's God, so what? You're calling God a liar. 1 John 5, 9 on verse 13. If we receive the witness of men, a Bible, the witness of God, the authorized version is greater. <gasps> For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son, the authorized version. Okay? <clears throat> he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. The witness, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Ghost, what is that spirit? Okay. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record God gave of his son. Oh, I believe God's perfect, but yet you don't believe God could give us a perfect set of scriptures. You are crazy. And I wonder if you are even saved. Because if you have that mentality in your little head, um, you're justifying, you're trying to justify something. And this is the record. That God hath given to us eternal life, Catholic. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And you don't get him by eating him either. And here is where you come to to get the conversation, a juicy conversation going with the Catholic. Sin of presumption. If I ever had toilet paper, if I ever needed toilet paper, I could wipe with the sin of presumption. Yeah, I, that's not harsh enough. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of... Look at how the... With what we're talking about, Okay? If you don't have something that is perfect, then how are you going to trust it? Oh, that's right. You, you got to go with your feelings, and you got to go to a Jesuit trained cemeterian who's gladly, who's going to gladly tell you, uh, yea, hath God said. And what about the Johannian comma, huh? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know, Catholic, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Right there, 1 John 5.13. You want to get a good, juicy conversation going with the Catholic? Take him there. The Catholic. Do you know that you're going to go to heaven when you die? 
They can't answer. I hope so. Well, you better know so. Well, God doesn't want us to know. You lie and you breast in. But that's okay, because I know you're involved with Satan's church. Can I tell you the truth? See, this, this is what we're dealing with, brethren, is the result of literally centuries of, yea, hath God said, from Rome. And it ain't getting any better, is it? Okay? It ain't. And there are other places here. Okay, John chapter 5. Uh, I remember vividly that uh, final, call, final call, Jean Boschoff, who's in hell right now, burning and screaming where he belongs. Thank you, Lord, for your righteous judgment. Hey, Jean, or John, sorry you're down there, but you put yourself there and you were the enemy of Christ. Praise you for your righteous judgment. John 5, 39 on to verse 47. I bring up Jean Boschoff and his little pipsqueak uh, underling uh, warning the people, and there was another guy that was a Jean Boschoff disciple. But they come to this to say that you don't need to read the Bible. And you shouldn't read the Bible. You should read the Scriptures. But uh, people will, he came to this, it's like, don't read the Scriptures. Don't read it. You don't need it. Go with your feelings. Yeah. Verse 39 on to verse 47. Search the Scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. We have just verified that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right? And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. Bibles are written by man. Written by Satan, written by man. They're man's words. Okay? And Satan is a fan of man. Okay, um, Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, I believe that is. Okay, my brother, our brother would be, uh, well, Brad, go there. Okay, we're going there. Yes, but he turned, uh, Matthew, I was right, by the way. Matthew 16, 23, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And remember, Satan was cursed to you crawl on the earth and eat dust and wear dust. Okay? I receive not honor from men. And the Bibles are written by man. They're man's words. And Jesus definitely does not receive honor from the Bible. To take out his words. Again, that message, as is above, so below, a direct quote from Aleister Crowley. <laughs> yeah. But I know you. That ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name. Ye receive me not. Jehovah saves. The anointed one. That's what Jesus means. Jehovah saves. That's what Jesus means. Christ. Anointed. The anointed one. Oh, and a lot of people out there are saying there are, there are many anointed ministries out there, aren't there? Yeah. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will see, will receive. The MacArthur Study Bible. The Schofield Study Bible. This is a pure Cambridge edition, by the way. The old, um, this is the uh, 1913 edition, I believe it is. But it's uh, the, the modern Schofield 3 KJV, they say even in the preface. This is based off of the pure Cambridge edition. The text is, okay, not the study notes. No, no. Okay? But, okay, the MacArthur Study Bible. Schofield Study Bible. The Ruckman Study Bible. The Henry Morris Study Bible. Matthew Henry Study Bible. 
uh, um, uh, what's that? Uh, Dake, the Phineas Dake Study Bible, the Companion Bible, Bullinger. Now the ones, most of the ones like Dake and um, uh, Bull, uh, Bullinger and um, Schofield, they use a pure Cambridge edition text. Okay, pure Cambridge, they have all the correct uh, pronunciations and uh, and capitalizations. Okay, that's the significance of that. Okay, and uh, unlike what Mr. Daniels told you. Uh, I believe that's very important. There's a big significance in capital S versus lowercase s spirit. There really is. Okay? But, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Authorized version. King James Version. Which it was, he never authorized it to be called the King James Version. It was just called that. It was originally called, and you can verify this yourself, the Authorized Version. Authorized by a king. Where the word of the king is, there is power. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. I still got a MacArthur study Bible in the ESV, by the way. Calvinist. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. How can ye believe? And remember, guide me on this one. That's Luke 16, I believe that is. I don't want to have to pause this. What is it? Luke 16. Um, For that which is highly esteemed among men it's an abomination in the sight of God. I can't find it ever. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, uh, Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. What is highly esteemed among men? Well, there is no perfect Bible. Justifying yourselves, boy. How can ye believe? How can ye believe? How can ye believe if you say there is no perfect standard on which you can judge things, yourself and others? You're your own God. You're your own God. And see that verse 44 in John, uh, thank you, by the way. In John uh, 5, uh, John, what is it? Yeah, John 5, 44. How can ye believe? Okay? Because someone comes in their, uh, in their own name and you receive that instead of the Lord and the record which he has written of his son, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God. How can ye believe? which receive honor one from another, and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God only. You read this. You read this. It's going to cut you. It's going to rebuke you. It's going to hurt you. It has to be a, a, there has to be a death before there can be a new life. For something new to begin, something old has to die. This is throughout Scripture, which these idiot, sleazy believists deny. Okay? Which many of Christianity deny. Okay? It has to be a pain. It has to be a suffering before it can become a glory. And the honor that cometh from God only, here you go. Do not think, I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, and whom he trusts. Now see, these guys, as, as I said to a, my brother yesterday, these guys, these Pharisees at this time, these Sadducees, the scribes, they knew the Scriptures. 
And granted, at this time, there were no divisions, there were no chapters and verses. So, <laughs> And if you've ever read actual um, scriptural Hebrew, it's continual. And you go from right to left, not left to right, by the way. Uh, it's continual. It's continual. <laughs> and you could easily be like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, you can. It's, it's uh, very, very difficult. Okay? The, the, my, my worst enemy... Uh, whom I hate, um, he he can do that. He can read uh, Hebrew and Greek, you know, and knowing Hebrew. That's that's difficult. That's difficult to do. But you got to remember, these guys, whose Jesus is addressing, they were well versed in the Scriptures. They were. They they could probably quote it better than you and I. They knew it very well. But see, it's the the Isaiah twenty eight thing about, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept. The saint will read the scripture because it's living and we get life. The others will read it mechanically and get no life out of it. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For And here it is. See, our Lord is not saying don't read or trust the scriptures. He's uplifting the scriptures. Okay? But there's a catch. What is that catch? For had ye believed Moses, if the scribes and Pharisees actually believed what Moses wrote about the Lord Jesus Christ, and Moses did write about him, I forget where that is in Deuteronomy, but there will be one like me, him you will uh, hearken unto. If they had believed Moses, like he said, ye would have believed me. They didn't believe the words they were reading. They thought in the actual mechanical reading thereof, without believing what is said. You get it? I, you got it. That was that was that was a pretty plain explanation. For he wrote of me. But, but, if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? The scribes and Pharisees at this time, they were sharp. They could probably, they could probably quote to you a whole, whatever, chapters of, um, of uh, the Torah. I'm, I'm sure they could have. These guys knew it. But they didn't believe it. Because if they had believed it, well, then none of this would have happened because they would have accepted their Messiah and things would have gone on in a different way. But it's prophesied that they were, so on and so forth. Okay? You, you see how this works? You see how this works? Okay? And also, so see, John Boshoff and guys, they go to that and say, you don't need to read the scriptures. No, the Lord is uplifting the scriptures. He's validating the importance of scripture. But see, you got to believe it. You have to believe what the Lord says. Hence, there is no perfect Bible. Because you don't want to believe what God said. So you fall in line with the Jesuit, Satanic, Catholic. They have thoughts that textual criticism. I'm sorry. I would love to see the Lord Jesus Christ just smack Jesuit James White right in his mouth. I would. <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, and the guy wears my haircut, too. I, I hate that. But I, I would. I'd love to see the Lord Jesus Christ just smack Jesuit James White in his mouth. I'd love to see that. Tell him I said so, too. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. <laughs> I, re I really would. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. I know that's not real. I know, I know, I know. I hate James White with perfect hatred. He is our enemy. He is the enemy of the Lord. 
he hates the authorized version of the scriptures. He doesn't believe there is a perfect Bible. <laughs> he says it himself, there is no perfect Bible. Of course there's no perfect Bible. Of course there's no perfect Bible. But that's what he said, there is no, no, nothing perfect. The scriptures are perfect. Okay? The guy's our enemy. Okay? Second Peter chapter 3, verses 5 on verse 7. For this they are willingly ignorant of choosing not to believe. Ignorance is not knowing. Willful ignorance is will not wanting to know, which is stupid. Okay? For this they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God, the scriptures, Peter is uplifting the scriptures here. Okay? The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, making reference unto the creation account. Okay? Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. See, the first earth was destroyed, nor was it. Because if that were the case, then you would have a contradiction in Scripture, and the gap theory is hooey anyway, okay? The gap theory is hooey anyway, okay? Uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. What does that mean? We today are on the first earth, okay? With the flood, God just killed everything, except like the fishies and stuff like that, and some of the bugs, and of course, those that were on the ark with Noah and his family and whatnot, okay? But the earth itself was not destroyed. Perished, meaning he killed everything on it, except for fishies and stuff like that, okay? Okay, that, that is an interesting thing that needs to be pointed out, because it was with water. Okay, and uh, the, the, you know the fishies that were in the, the river is like, oh wow, wow, look at all this space we got now. Okay, but anyway, okay. Verse seven. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, okay, after the flood, by the same word, same word, scripture, are kept in store reserved on the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, hold on. Look at that verse. Look at that context. Okay? Peter, number one, is uh, giving credence to the creation, God, uh, creation account in Genesis by the word of God. In verse 7, oh, and he's also talking about the flood itself. Okay? And in verse 7, after the flood, verifying scripture, but also making mention reserved on the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. You read the prophets. You read the minor prophets, which talks about future judgment by fire in some of them. Okay? All right? Peter is validating scripture as the Lord was validating scripture and the necessity thereof, and believing what it says. Okay? And Christianity, they don't even believe their Bibles. Hardly are they going to believe the Scriptures. It's possible. But that's between them and God. We're the seed planters, remember, brother? Okay? And again, with all this stuff, again, <laughs> you shall know them by their fruits. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? Sooner or later, and especially like with the sleazy believists, um, you know, it doesn't take much to get out of them there. Well, I'm better than so-and-so. That I mean, you can just barely scratch those dudes and do this. And they'll, they'll, that comes out, well, I'm better than so-and-so. Yeah, yeah. And you're something special because you saved yourself by your own belief, you wicked devil. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 31 on verse 33. 31 on verse 33. Their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital S, capital case R. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Think about that. Their 
is no perfect Bible. You're right. You're right. There definitely ain't no perfect Bible. But there is a perfect Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures. This is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. This is the perfect standard. Again, the perfect God gave us a perfect standard. For you to say that the perfect God can't perfectly preserve his word and have it for us right here, December, what is it, 22nd, 2023? <laughs> Their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Yeah, yeah, you believe in one God that's of three persons too. <laughs> For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gamara. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. That old serpent. The old serpent, the dragon, Satan. Yeah. And the cruel venom of asps. Hey, look at me, Christian. Guess what? The Bibles poison. Yes, they are. You heard me right. Go ahead and quote me. I don't give a rat's rear end. Here's where pure water, every word of God is pure. Here's purity, the authorized version of the scriptures. It's right here. Now, you want to deny that, it's your problem. But when you're standing at the great white throne of judgment, think about that. The very word that you want to deny, just like the very God you want to deny, you're going to have to give an account to. And how is he going to judge you? We've already looked. By this. Uh, you, you Christians. <laughs> you Christians. Okay, you you guys who say there is no perfect word of God, you know, blah, blah, blah. You guys, when you get to that great white throne of judgment and you're going to be judged by this very word that you say imperfect. Wow. I can't, I, I can't imagine that, man. I can't even imagine that. I can't. I, I mean, I can't. <laughs> Uh, Zechariah chapter 7 verses 8 unto the close and the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah saying thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying execute true judgment and shew mercy and compassion to every man to his brother and oppress not the widow these are all works different dispensation instruction and righteousness and oppress not the widow, the widow nor the fatherless the stranger nor the poor let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken. You shall be as gods. The Lord hath not uh, said for thee not to go into Egypt, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, setteth thee on against us. Yea, hath God said. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. I have actually encountered someone who did that to me on several occasions. When they asked me, they asked me, take out the sword. It's like, okay, you, they asked me. And I'm reading. I've had that happen where people have actually done that. Oh, sends, sends a shiver down the spine, man. Anyway. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words of the Lord of hosts. And hear the words which the Lord of hosts, thank you, hath sent in his lowercase s spirit by the former prophets, one that he imparts. Okay? Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. 
Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear second verses. And when you get to the um, into the time of Jacob's trouble, Christian, because you're left behind, and you got these idiots telling you just believe, you're once saved, always saved during the time of Jacob's trouble, and you take the mark of the beast, you're done for, you're going to hell. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among the, all the nations whom they knew not. They're talking about the diaspora, showing you who specifically doctrinally this is written for. We're looking at this for instruction and righteousness. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned. For they laid the pleasant land desolate. And of course, a couple of one verse mentions here. Just a couple. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Just one verse. And our Lord is quoting Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 is what he is quoting. Matthew 13, verse 15. What are you? I'm in 12. <laughs> Excuse me. It's not my normal set of scriptures that I use. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted. And I should heal them. And of course, like I said, you look this up on your own time. Uh, Isaiah 6, verses 9, on to verse 10. What has happened? Because of the water wearing the stones, because of the constant badgering by Rome, Christianity has been trained to be, yea, hath God said. Acts chapter 7. And see, when you and I come around, saint, saying the authorized version is the perfect word of God. And then they get into all, all their Roman Catholic arguments. And they try to take you in circles. We have given ample proof in this video, scriptural documentation of verses to use to refute their stupid arguments. But at the end of the day, do they want to hear it? See, that's the thing about planting a seed. When you don't want to hear something, but yet you can't get it. That's why, that's like the, the one dude. He stopped his ears. He didn't want to hear it. Why? Because what? Ignorance is bliss, right? And you don't know what sin is until the Lord tells you through Scripture what sin is. I had not known uh, sin unless the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Ooh, that's a good one to, to put in the description box for this. Romans 7. Pick apart. I want in Romans 6 while we're at it. Okay. <laughs> Pick apart. Okay. Oops. Acts chapter 7. Verses 48 on and verse 54. We're almost done. We're almost done. Acts chapter 7. 48 on and verse 54. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Stephen, Stephen is quoting scripture here. Okay, coming up. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. I believe he's quoting Isaiah 65 or 66. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? I believe that's Isaiah 66. I believe it is. I believe it is. Uh, I don't. Yeah, it is. It's Isaiah 66. Hath not my hand made all these things? Quoted scripture. You know, Christian, going to your little phallus house church building is not sanctified in scripture for you today. No, you've made an idol of your building. 
Guess what? That's Catholic! Oh, and I've run into Christians all the time. Where are you sending them? Uh, to the Lord through the scripture. Yeah, but, yeah, but, no, there is no yeah, but. Okay? You don't send them to a building to learn about Christ. God forbid. They'll learn about, if anything, that man of sin, the son of perdition. They'll learn about Satan. They'll become that spirit of Antichrist. Now, he quotes scripture to him. Then he goes off on him. <laughs> Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Now, he's addressing his people, the Jews. But is that not indicative with almost any man, woman, or child you meet today? Which of the prophets have not your fathers, showing who he's addressing, persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one. All capital letters reference on the Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, whom who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Youch! Number one, he reigns on their parade about the temple and the buildings. Then he quotes scripture. Then he goes off on them. What's their reaction? What is usually the reaction, dear saint? Usually, the reaction. When you lovingly Gently present truth. You know, Christianity doesn't want you to scare people. Don't tell them the truth. That unless they repent of themselves. That's the repenting of you that you do. That thinking you're a good person. You couldn't repent of your sins if you tried. The repenting is you're repenting that you think you're a good person. Okay? But that you repent of yourself. Unless you do that, you're going to hell. But that's scaring people. That's not loving them. Love is telling someone, unless you get right with the Lord and you come to Him on His way, broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, call upon His name and He save you. Unless you do it His way, guess what, Jack? You're going to hell. The devils also. Thou believest there is one God. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? But no, Christianity, don't scare people. Love them into the love them into the kill kingdom. God loves you unconditionally. No, He doesn't. No, He doesn't. No, He does not. We addressed that in the previous video. Okay. What was their reaction when they heard these things? They were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on Him with their teeth. Cut to the heart. When you read in Acts chapter two. They were pricked in the heart. Men and brethren, what shall we do? When someone's cut to the heart. See, a prick, a little pricking, a little comes out. You cut someone to the heart, a whole bunch cuts, uh, comes out. And it sure came out with them where their heart was. It wasn't with the Lord, was it? Acts 22. Here's a really good one. Acts 22. Acts 22. Someone who doesn't want to accept the truth, brethren, all we can hope to do is that we plant seeds and that the Lord watereth and bring it to pass. But other than that, if they don't want to hear it, want to track? No? Okay. You want to believe your little daydream that there is no such thing as a perfect standard to judge yourself and others? What are you, what are you hiding? What are you just as if I? Huh? Acts 22, verses 17 on to verse 22. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And I saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprison and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen, or Stephen, was shed, 
I also was standing by, and consenting unto his death, and kept the remnant of them that slew him. Check this out. And he said unto me, the Lord speaking to Paul, the Lord said this to Paul, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And that's prophesied in the book of Isaiah, light unto the Gentiles. Okay, it was, it was prophesied, excuse me, that we Gentiles were eventually going to be grafted into the tree of the Jew in this dispensation. Okay? And Paul was giving his defense unto his people, the Hebraic Jews. Check this out. And they gave him audience, listen to him, unto this word that the Gentiles would have part of the inheritance among the brethren. That us Gentiles are grafted in to make them jealous. Remember about Peter? He needed to see a vision. And he still struggled with it. James! Not the one who got killed, but James himself. Acts chapter 21. Okay? Acts chapter 21. He himself struggled with that. Okay? And they gave him audience unto this word. And they lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. <coughs> the Lord said unto Paul, sending you to the Gentiles. In line with the prophecies of Scripture in, say, like Isaiah, and these Hebraic Jews who should have known didn't believe it. Because look at how they reacted. <coughs> how do you react with truth? How do you react, react with truth? Let's finish this up in the book of Revelation. And a very sad reminder. Now you got to remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ, the church, is not on the earth. It's not. It isn't. Oh, it isn't. Okay? There'll be the 144,000 Jews, Moses and Elijah. Okay? God is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, unlike what Eric Lyon Fart wants you to believe. Okay? Um, he's not going anywhere. We, the body of Christ, uh, we are the ones who are going somewhere. Okay? But in Revelation chapter 16, verses 10 and 11, now, and also, people, none of the trumpets have happened. Okay, none of the judgments from none of the book of Revelation has happened today. The drying up of Euphrates is during the time of Jacob's trouble. It doesn't happen today. Okay? You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? You really do. But the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. This is after the mark of the beast too, by the way. But even with the mark of the beast, there are going to be some who don't have it, but yet aren't going to repent under the most extreme conditions. Revelation 9, 19 on verse 21, and we will be done. Revelation 9, verses 19, on to the close. And again, the trumpets. The trumpets have not... That. Watch out for these guys who are trying to tell you that the stuff that happens in Revelation is happening today, or has already happened. Get away from people like that. But anyway, verses 19 on to verse 21. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their, their power is in their mouth. Hmm. They have God said. And in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. And with them they do hurt. 
and the rest of the men, which were not killed by those plagues, yet repented not of their works, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries. And if you want to get involved into the Greek thing, into a Greek thing, I should say, that is pharmakeia. Pharmacy. Pharmaceuticals. Nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. And this is before the Mark of the Beast. It's hard to imagine that man can be so ingrained in sin, so ingrained in wickedness, that they go past a point of no return, uh, that under the most adverse circumstances, they're not willing to repent. And again, today, what are we repenting of? You couldn't repent of your sins if you tried. The repenting that you are doing is of yourself. That is going to be it for this little video. I, I do believe, uh, Lord willing, we have um, covered enough for you today on this topic about um, the Word of God. And, uh, you know, well, how do you go about to prove that the Scriptures, the authorized version, is the Word of God? Okay? Look at how it's attacked. Look at how it's attacked. Look at how it, it, look at the fruit of the authorized version. Look at how it has attacked. Every Bible that comes out compares itself to what? The authorized version. Thank you for watching this if you do. Got two videos to upload, so thank you, brethren. Thank you. Hope you have a good weekend. We love you. I'm going to try to be getting a hold of some of the brethren. Um, uh, this weekend, definitely. Sunday is going to be a bad day. Sunday, the 24th, um, uh, at midnight from 23 on to 24 is when my mother died. In, in hell. Anyway, thank you. We'll get these uploaded. Thank you for watching this if you do. Love you.